welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at TQDM in Python, who have quite a cool logo. And in fact, you can actually buy their merchandise with the logo on it, which you can't do for most Python libraries. But of course, what does TQDM do? Well, it means progress in Arabic, and it's an abbreviation for I love you so much in Spanish. Um, but you use it to get a smart progress meter. And uh, it is pretty simple in terms of how it's used. It has many advantages. It's fast, 60 nanoseconds per iteration, which is over 100 times faster than progress, which is uh, the one that gives you customizable progress bars. And it does that because it has these smart algorithms which predict how much time is remaining, so it doesn't always display it. It works on any platform, or pretty much any platform. And it has no dependencies at all, because usually lots of libraries will depend on lots of other libraries, but TQDM does not. Usually I do things from scratch, but I did find this nice GIF of the TQDM website, which I'm going to show, of someone quickly using it and the command line tool. Um, we won't look at the command line tool, just the Python code, but you can see what they've done is quite nice. So to start, we need to say pip install tqdm. And you also want to install pandas and numpy if you haven't got them. So from tqdm, import tqdm and trange. And they're the things we're going to be using. And so what we have is a simple program that we're going to start with. And it's going to generate some random numbers. So we need to import random. We need to import time. And it's going to do this a thousand times. And then we're going to have a total, which is zero. And just say for x in data total, just add the sum of the squares. So x star star 2. And then we print the total. It's a very simple program. We can just run. And it does it. And because we've only got a thousand, it doesn't take that long. But Instead, what we could do, we could add a delay in. So uh, we'll just sleep for a thousandth of a second. And it takes a bit of time. And this is always one of the things that worries me because you never know how long it's going to take. You know, is it going to take a year and then, you know, it's not worth waiting? Is it going to take just a couple of minutes and then maybe it is worth waiting? And you see it's done. So uh, if we want to see how it's going, we can just type in tqdm data. And now we can see as it's progressing. And even though it takes the same amount of time, maybe ever so slightly longer, it feels like that time passes a lot quicker. But there are lots of options. And if we do help, TQDM, we can see all of those options, except it doesn't uh, give them here. It just has a bunch of arguments and a bunch of keyword arguments, which is a bit annoying. So um, we can instead get help on the initialization. And now we have an iterable, which you always put in. Then we've got the description, the total, the leave, the file, and so on, and all these different arguments. 
So we can customize any of these arguments. And so we might decide that we want to set a description, which is summing squares. I might just set the color equal to red. And it is worth noting that color has a U in it because in lots of modules, it doesn't. And I'll just comment out the help. And you can see we run it. It looks slightly odd with the red color, but uh, we have this message here saying that it's summing squares. So we know that it's working. However, one thing we might decide to do is rather than having our code like this, we instead create a T range. Which is the same as range, a thousand. And uh, instead of uh, multiplying by two, we just generate a random number and square that and then continue sleeping. And we don't need the pre-computed list. And that might be useful if you have an operation that you just apply a set number of times. But you might instead decide that rather than having a T range, you're just going to loop over a range. And instead you're going to have a TQDM object, which is often called T. And we can just set the parameters. But the most important one this time is that the total is equal to 1000. Because maybe you have a job you want to do in batches. So instead we're going to have batches of 10. And at the end of each batch, we're going to update T with 100, with 10. And then at the end, we close the T because it's finished. And we can just let that run. And you can see here that all the updates are now multiples of 10 because we're adding 10 on each time. And you might have something that doesn't do it 10 at a time. It might just do a set number at a time. And then you can do that more easily. Or you might decide instead of doing it like this, you have certain batches and you want to look at each batch. So uh, maybe at each batch, you say here, we update and it automatically updates by one. And then at the end, we reset it. And so it looks like this. And of course, if you were to close it each time or start it a new one again, you would get a long line of all of these bars, which you might want. However, another thing I quite like is that if we import pandas and numpy, course as abbreviations because it's a lot quicker to type out. We can then create a data frame. We can make it a pandas dot data frame. And we can have a random dot randint zero and a thousand and we're going to have 10 million by six as the shape of our data we can then have tqdm.pandas and you'll see that that means when we run df.group by zero dot progress apply instead of just our natural apply and so that means you can apply, apply the function And it gives you a TQDM bar for it. And you can see that that has loaded. And there is one more thing, actually. And that is 
using the GUI. So we might decide. So you might have some application, and you might say, instead from TQDM, do GUI, import T range, and this means that our T range object is now going to have a GUI. So you might say for I in T range thousands time dot sleep one e minus three, so a thousand of a second. And now you see we get a GUI with a graph, which you can see is done in matplotlib. And uh, if your application needs some kind of visual version instead of the progress bar, which I think is quite nice, you can do that. So you can see that TQDM is a very useful module with a few advantages over progress. It doesn't have the spinners or the strangely cool but random customizations you can do but it does work very quickly it can be used not just with this pandas example but with a few other modules that are quite nice and it's quite common because it's so simple hopefully you've enjoyed this video learn how to use another cool module and i'll see you again same time next week till then